Hi to all my free motion quilting friends. If you're new today to the quilt along, I will always have a full playlist of this entire quilt along that you can click at any time in the top right hand corner of this video. And be sure to always check the description box of a new video to see if there's any info that you need to know. Today we will be working on our free motion quilting blocks number 19, 20, and 21. Enough talking already. Let's get to free motion quilting. First up today in our free motion quilt along is our feather heart. For this free motion quilt design, we need to make some registration lines to get it sort of right. Take your marking utensil, the one that disappears of course, and sketch out a heart design. Now you can see exactly where I have the heart opened up there at the top and where I dip the line in down in the center. And then I put those wavy lines at the bottom lifting up sort of and it just gives it some design element. On the inside of my heart you can see the lines that I made on all of the really curved areas and there were about four lines that I made. I also put some outside marks on the outside of my heart where I wanted my feather to go farther out, but as we get further into the tutorial, you'll see that I kind of messed that part up. I started on the right hand side of the heart, the one that had the line dipping more toward the center of the heart, and I made a tiny heart right there on the bottom of that stem. Making that tiny heart shape first really helped me get into that very first feather. And those felt pretty comfortable to me. As you can see, they look pretty decent, I think. And you can see I'm coming up to that registration line, one of the straight lines that I put on the curve. And remember in my last tutorial where I said to respect the line, so we're going to make that feather smaller and not go beyond that line and then we restart our feathers. If you missed that tutorial, you'll have to check it out. There was a lot of really good information in there about how to make feathers look curvy. So you can see right there, I just respected the line again and then continued on with my feathers and so far so good. Now I'm coming up to a cross section and I really had to think about this part because I didn't want to touch my feather on that other blue line there, which is the other side of the heart, because I didn't want them to be, you know, too congested right there. I wanted them to look separate. So I think I did achieve that in the end. I don't know, I guess we'll see though. <laughs> so anyways, I get to the end here and I make that one last feather and then I backtrack all the way back down that vein and I come all the way back around to that very initial first heart shape that I made in the center. That whole first part felt really comfortable to me, but I think I have issues with making the feather on the opposite side. So I think I really need to practice that. Here's another area where it gets really congested. The other half of that heart, the left hand side is right there. So these feathers right here, I made a little bit smaller so that way it's not so congested. Now here I was getting a little frustrated because I'm like, which way am I going? <laughs> because when you're doing these feathers around a curve on the outside, you really, really have to think about what you're doing. And I was trying and in that, as you can see, I totally missed my mark on the outside of my heart. I wanted to make my feathers really big and billowy hitting those outside marks and that didn't happen. Not on this one anyways. But nonetheless, I kept going because that's the only way I'm going to get any better at these feathers. So here I'm just really trying to recover from all of those bad feathers. And you know, it is what it is. I think I started to gain control about right here <laughs> at the end of that feather. And what I did was make a really cute little heart at the very end, and I thought that that part was really cute. Overall, looking at it, not too bad, but I did miss those outside marks, and 
I don't know. I just really wanted to hit those. See right there? Yeah, it's so far from where I wanted to be, but practice makes perfect. Now I started on the left hand side, starting at the top. And I did try something a little different at first there just to see if it would work and it didn't. I tried one feather on one side and another on the other, like going back and forth and that doesn't really work out too good. So I just continued on like normal. And so far this side of the heart on the outside seemed to feel a lot more comfortable to me than the other side. So here I'm coming up against another congested area and I think I started to freak out a little bit. <laughs> so I started to make the feathers a little bit smaller. Then what I did after that is just travel straight back up to the center of the heart. I'm going to continue my feathers down and as you can see here, I totally did not respect the line. <laughs> I didn't take my own advice and do my own rules here. So yeah, I think I just was getting a little frustrated. But you see here, I traveled through some feathers to get to that last little piece at the end. And that, that one seemed to go okay seemed a little bit smoother a little bit frustrated though because I really had to think about which way I was going and then at the end there I did end up putting a little heart when I was done to me I think this block is a little advanced even for me I mean but how are you going to get to that point unless you actually do it and practice it so for me it was excellent practice and here's the end result. I mean, honestly, when you're looking back and look away a little bit, don't look like right on it, it looks pretty good. But see, I'm still worried that I didn't hit those marks. So, but I'll remember that for next time, right? So, oh, well, I did enjoy this block though, and it's going in my quilt. Next up on today's agenda is some easy, easy tunnels. Yep, this is an easy one. After that last one, we need an easy one. <laughs> For this one, you're going to start off making a serpentine line all the way down. And then you're going to add another serpentine line right next to it, about an inch away from that first line. And then you're going to do the same again. I believe there are five in this block, five tunnels. I also did travel a lot on the ends of each of these tunnels in order to make these lines and that's how you're going to get back and forth. And honestly, this was so easy. This was like a no-brainer, really relaxing uh, quilt block for me. You can start on your first tunnel on any end that you want. And all you're going to do is put a bunch of curved shapes all the way down each of those tunnels. It's sort of like a C shape. It's really super easy to make. You just kind of rock back and forth and back and forth. And the only thing is when you get to the end of this tunnel and you go to the next one, you're going to turn it and make sure that those C curves go in the opposite direction of the one tunnel that you just made. So that way it'll look like there's movement within that quilt block. It looks really cool. The only thing you really want to concentrate on really on this block is staying in between those two serpentine lines. And I do think it's a pretty easy block, so I don't think you're going to have much trouble with it at all. I really liked making those C's within that serpentine, those two lines. I don't know, let me know in the comments what you think of it. I know it's kind of simple, but here's the end result. I mean, it looks really neat. It looks like it's moving a little bit. I don't know, what do you think? Okay, next up are some really cute sunflowers. First things first, you're going to just make a simple circle in the center. And then you're going to put one elongated petal on one side, travel around your circle, do another one. This is how I get my petals somewhat symmetrical. 
and you'll have eight of them all together. You're going to mirror them from each other. When you make one, make sure that you have an identical one right across from it. And definitely don't be afraid to travel within that circle in the center. And here you see I'm doing a little crisscross mash in the center of this uh, sunflower or daisy, whatever it is, <laughs> I don't know. Now I don't make the same center on all of my sunflowers. I do different things, so mix it up a little bit. Then I go straight out into an echo and I echoed every single petal. And I wasn't sure that I was going to do that. That wasn't the plan at the beginning, but it, I felt like it just needed that after I made it. I just felt like artistically that's what needed to happen, I guess. So I echoed it and I think it turned out pretty good. Here I'm going to come out anywhere in, from in between two petals and make a big leaf. And I come right through the center and do an echo on the inside. Now this is where it gets a little tricky on how to do the next petal. And all I did was just come off of the other flower and go right into a petal. And I hope you can see that on here, how I did that. That way I didn't have to lift my needle up and all that and break thread. I was just able to go right into a petal. It does look a little funny right there to me, but in the end, you really can't see the difference in it. And then I just go around and I echo all of the petals. Here you can see the two sunflowers together and they blend really nicely, I think. I mean, I, I just love how they turned out. And don't forget to put your leaves in there. They add so much character. Okay, let's do one more sunflower. You see I'm coming right off of that one petal, off of the echo of the petal. And then I'm making my circle and I'm backtracking if I need to. And I'm making one directly on the opposite side of the other petal. And then I'm doing the same all the way around so that I have eight petals in the end. And this actually was pretty easy. I don't think you're going to have trouble with it. And then at the end, I did a filler all over, just echoing all along the outside. And I just followed back and forth, almost like I was making little curves, like little birds, you know, those little stick figure birds that you see in the sky in paintings and stuff. That's kind of what it felt like. <laughs> Overall, I found this block relatively easy to free motion quilt. And I think you will too. I really like how it turned out. Be sure to go down in the comments and let me know what you think of today's free motion quilt along blocks. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.